That's terrific. And I think Greg, Greg's here, right? Excellent. The flight made it in. So um, our next speaker is Greg Tevis from Deloitte. Um, came in from Texas, I believe. And um, he's a senior manager in Deloitte's strategy and operations practice. Uh, he does focus on technology and telecom industries. Uh, not only is he a consultant, but previously, this is great, another rocket scientist, so he was a telecom network engineer who um, designed data networks for Fortune 100 companies. And then, um, sounds like you were at GE that w and you worked on aircraft engines, right. which is phenomenal. Um, he's got a engineering degree in biomedical and electrical engineering and an MBA. So, uh, Greg, thank you for coming. Give us some context while we sure. So I'm gonna. So uh, what I'm gonna talk about is 4G and the uh, the shift to 4G and what 4G does uh, enables and some things for considerations for people as you're working in large enterprises and start thinking about how that impacts your business or smaller businesses to try and start those up. What are some considerations and how do they fit within the overall ecosystem of the of, of 4G? The first consideration that I have for you guys is around. Um, is, is around weaknesses in uh, the ecosystem and considerations around weakness, weaknesses in the ecosystem. So 4G is, so the US was a leader in 3G technologies which enabled us to create a, a large economic value um, and lead pretty much the rest of the world in applications and develop an entire ecosystem around applications and devices and other things. And you can see that now from 3G moving to 4G as you have you know, two of the fastest growing device makers are actually US companies. Uh, whereas in the past, when we started talking about 2G and older technologies, they were actually international companies. So 3G has given us the uh, opportunity to kind of, and the right to play and win in a 4G ecosystem. But we have, um, you know, but you can only be as good as the entire ecosystem comes together. And so as you consider the entire ecosystem, I like to call it the milkshake effect, right? Um, which is the, the, the bottleneck in the milkshake is really the straw. Right, so you've got all the creation in, you've got all the creation of the nice milkshake sitting there in the bottom, uh, and then you want to consume it, but you're, but you're hindered by the straw and the viscosity of the milkshake, right? So, and that's kind of like what the U.S. is facing right now from a 4G perspective, uh, because right now we have about 50 megahertz left of undeployed spectrum uh, across the U.S., um, and so everything else has to be reallocated. And as you begin to look at those reallocation, if you look at prior reallocation times, uh, it took about six years to reallocate um, PCS spectrum and AWS spectrum uh, to redeploy them for, for additional uh, services. Um, and it took about 10 years, I think it's right, 10 or 12, it's on the presentation, I promise you, it's beautiful. But it's, uh, you know, and I could just make it all up now, right? No, but it's, but, uh, <laughs> But it took about 10 years for uh, 700 megahertz to be redeployed, right? And so as we start to think about this, um, redeploying spectrum, unless we start, you know, unless we start aggressively now, which you, see, uh, which you see a lot of the larger telecommunications companies doing and the wireless communications companies doing, this isn't something that 4G is going to blanket the, the entire country tomorrow, right? So you have to be very balanced in how you develop things for 4G, whether they be devices or whether they be applications. And you also have to be very cognizant of the limitations when you're outside of that 4G and even kind of when you're inside the 4G. If we think about specific examples of, I'll use uh, the Chromebook as an example. You guys are all familiar with Google's Chromebook, right? Well, it's a great paperweight right now, unfortunately, for the most part, right? Because if you're not on an internet connection or you don't have that availability to access things, it doesn't do, it, do, it uses the cloud for everything, right? And so as you begin to consider um, 4G and what, you're, and what you would like to do across 4G, there's an inherent balance you have to create today between being able to do things locally and being able to source the network for things that are extremely important to source the network for. So that's kind of um, lesson one. So this, is, so this is my point. You're really only as good as the weakest link in the ecosystem. So when you're looking to do something, think about all, the entire ecosystem. Here is um, a chart sitting on your left, my right, 
um, you've got USA, and you can see, and uh, green chart is what's available to be deployed, blue is what is already deployed, and you can see the reallocation timeframes of those things. So as you begin to look at it, things like um, companies being able to get extra spectrum, like uh, AT&T and the T-Mobile transaction potentially right now, you can see that that could help either accelerate deployment of new technologies um, within, within the ecosystem. Uh, next is consideration two. So first impressions matter in 4G, um, and especially with a lot of fish in the sea. So as an example, uh, so 25% of apps that... <laughs> 25% of apps that are downloaded are only used once and never used again, right? 67% of apps are free in the Android marketplace. So what does this mean? These are just two data points, right? But the first means that, um, you know, people have a lot of choice, and if they're not impressed immediately by the functionality of that, uh, of that application or that service, they'll move on. That actually becomes ever, that becomes increasingly important in a 4G ecosystem where they can do it faster and try more things. Um, and then people are also going to have a plethora of options. I mean, just in the pat just since the iPhone and the Android marketplace, you've got 425,000 applications in the in the and which has probably changed since I've created the slide or even walked in the room. And then 28,000 applications on Android, which has changed. As, but you start to think about the magnitude of those things and the choices that somebody has to make in one search. Um, and being able to find what it is that they want and filter out all of the things that they haven't wanted to see. And then two, there's very little frictional cost to trying something and discarding it, right? Which creates a whole lot of consumer surplus in the marketplace, which people aren't paying for today uh, knowingly, right? But what actually happens is while you're not paying for it today knowingly, you're actually paying for it today unknowingly by giving your data and other things or through advertising, which is a lot of what was talked about before. So those are mediums that people are using to monetize those assets and monetize those transactions and relationships with you that are going to have to be more deliberate in nature going forward. So uh, to keep in mind in 4G, one is the fact that you will have, uh, um, you know, adoption could be spotty, so your product better work well the first time. If you think about Facebook, and one of the critical components of Facebook was the fact that it was always up. Uh, if you guys have all seen the social network, maybe? Yeah, right. So that was one of the huge pain points that he had, right? He's like, if nothing else, this thing never goes down, right? Because everything else goes down. Uh, Salesforce.com as well. Um, theirs is always, ha like, access to the application and simplicity. And so any decision that they make is critical that they, they don't compromise on those two things because they feel that those are core to their success in the marketplace. And so understanding what those things are is critical to how you deploy and choose to focus in the future as well. The next one is really about portfolio management. And this is if you can afford to do it, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Um, and that's largely due um, to, one, a, a risk issue, and two, a timing issue. So when we start to talk, we talked about the deployment in 4G and possibly how long it would take to do these things. If you start to look at verticals like transportation, you think about smart traffic flow, real-time monitoring, or you start to think about parking applications, right, that would, uh, which you're sitting driving around downtown Atlanta, if you find yourself in downtown Atlanta, and decide you want to park. You know, where's a parking space? Where's it open? Why waste your time doing that, right? And if you're using electronic vehicles, right, like where's the nearest charging station? How can it, how can it determine where that is and how much charge you have left and where do you need to go? All of these applications, all of these things are in the future, Right? And the, and the, and the uh, infrastructure is being built. But the fact, that, um, the fact that it's not yet requires you to play, hedge your bets across a number of different areas if you can afford to do so, or within each one of the verticals if you can do so as well in order to increase the chances of success. Because each one of these are going to take off at a different rate, mostly because of the things that are hindering them. Like if we think about uh, digital health locker for health, I don't think any of us will dispute that one day all of our probably vital signs will be tracked and stored somewhere on the internet. But like Google was talking about that five years ago. Microsoft was talking about that seven years ago. Both of them have really run into a roadblock when you start to consider, one, the cost of those devices and the complexity in capturing that data, two, the ecosystem of the payers, and, and three, like 
I don't really want to know what my health is, health is like, right? I'd really rather take an aspirin than I'd take a vitamin. So when you start to think about these things, all the complexities that you have, just because the bandwidth is there in the for, uh, uh, from a 4G perspective, you have to think about how that weaves into the overall ecosystem. And placing your bets in a number of different areas allows you to kind of increase the overall return. And then lastly, uh, consider enablers. So, um, you know, there are four kind of key things when we talk about the ecosystem and, and how you should picture yourself fitting into it. So one of them is devices. The other is network, which is the 4G component. But there are two other things that are also enablers that sit on the other side that you, could, you should look to aggressively leverage, which have gotten no shortage of press, but have kind of stumbled in the marketplace, uh, which are analytics and cloud. And so as you start to think about it, uh, these devices and this network is going to enable a plethora of information to be collected about you, about what you're doing, about uh, where you go, what you spend, how you, what you eat, how you interact, a uh, very big brother, right? And so the ability to do something useful with that, those analytics is, is, is uh, extremely important, but it do something useful with those analytics in an open um, and uh, honest manner. Right? So you've seen a lot of backlash from Apple and Google and others around what they're doing with customer data and how they're, how, how they're in, effect, in effect taking advantage of some people. Um, I urge you very strongly not only to consider how you can use analytics to make, help people make better choices and selection, but also uh, be upfront with them if you're choosing to deliver those type of solutions such that they know the relationship that they have with you. And then also cloud is a major factor as well because it's enabling the distributed nature to put things elsewhere and you to access them wherever you are. Now, I don't know, um, Apple has their new iCloud application and we have a number of different applications from a business environment as well that people are looking at from a cloud perspective. What's nebulous a little bit about cloud is that you see everybody making acquisitions, a lot of the big companies making acquisitions on cloud, but most of them can't explain why they're making those acquisitions or what they're gonna do with cloud. But they just know cloud is good, I want some. It's kind of like the new iPhone 4S. Like nobody knows what it does different, but they want it. Um, but you, but uh, in understanding how this distributed architecture fits and being able to weave into it is important in the 4G ecosystem as well because that sharing of data and that sharing of processing power, both within the network and the ability to process that um, on your devices as well is gonna be key uh, balance between the two areas. All right, we'll let Andre pull up our next presentation. Um, our next speaker is George Fuenzalita, who is the Vice President and General Manager uh, at Inco.